get wet over here. That's the wet side. Even in the front. <laughs> so I should move over a bit, right? Yeah, it should get too wet. Because my camera is... Uh, it's not like it's drenching. It's a heavy mist. Oh, I see. Otherwise, I'll just do it. Uh, I don't... Special effects. Some gems in the original 
on the crew, we're going to go take a look. And I'll let you know about that after we go to you that set. Coming up for your right hand side are the first set. Many movie props you'll see on this tour. These are two surviving P-40 airplanes from the movie Pearl Harbor starring Ben Affleck. And they are made for the mold of a real P-40, but these are a steel frame camera and fiberglass. They made 16 of these planes. The other 14, well, they were taken to an airfield that blown apart during production. For any scene where you saw more than 16 planes, 12 were real. The rest were CGI, also known as computer-generated images. As we turn this corner, take a look to your left, and you'll see a series of one-story beach buildings known as bungalows. Bungalows are used by the production crews for the everyday business of filming. But when you get your right about where I'm at, if you take one last look to your right, then high in the sky, you'll get your last eyeful of the Earful Tower. Now this is the closest you can get to the Earful Tower in the entire park. But you'll want to look quick, because we're going to head inside now into the world of creative costuming. In costuming, it all begins with the designer sketch. You'll see those along the walls. There are talented people seen in the movie. Hey, it's going to work to see if the costumes are by the performer. On the left hand side, you'll see the costumes for the movie. That was a long period. The first is for the college students. Second, the success. I saw a double show, a double story. You see the kid, and I'm great. but the bottom can be made up to play the bottom of the ocean floor. Provides a safer, more controllable environment than shooting outdoors. It was originally built for Terry Hulk Hogan's series Thunder in Paradise, most recently used for the underwater nightmare scenes in the movie House on Haunted Hill. This brings us into an area known as Residential Street, but before you pack a bag and move into one of these houses, look through the one on your right, all the way to the backyard. You see, all the houses here on Residential Street are just false fronts and facades. When Jim Barney was here in 1988, shooting Ernest Day's Christmas, the second house on your right, number 242, the one that's under renovation, well, that was used for the exterior shots of Burns' house. This was the first fully feature film done here, one year before we opened the park to you, our guests. Since then, all the houses that you see here have been used in a different TV show, commercial, or special. And each one represents a different style of American architecture, because different scripts call for different scenes. But by far the most famous house is on your left hand side. There's seven seasons of Asian Lions Out House with all the Dorothy Rose, Blanche, and Sophia, also known as the Golden Girls. The exterior shots were done here in Florida when they were edited in with interior shots done out in Burbank, California. This was all for a show set down in Miami. Right next door to the Golden Girls is the Blue King Cloud style house. That was Alice's house for the Disney Channel's Adventures in Wonderland. And across the street, the two-story beige facade was used for Dutch Tone Television's hit sitcom Emptiness during those Rocky Westons. You might recall that the Westons were the next door neighbors to the Golden Girls on TV. On our back lot, though, they did live across the street from each other. When production crews go out this shooting location, they have to deal with a lot of factors that they can't control, like crowds, noises, and traffic. So they prefer to come here in our back lot and shoot, but they can control just about all of those factors. I said just about all those factors because, well, traffic is not one of them. 
We're going to be stopping here for just a moment while another shuttle passes by. While we're stopped, if you take a look over to the left-hand side of the shuttle off the front, you'll see we're off the right You'll see what looks like a small town church. Coming up on your right-hand side. Starts off with three wooden zone heads from the 13th Warrior starting at Studio Pandemic. A spaceship on the corner was flown by Christopher Lloyd as my favorite Martian. The miniature counterpart had a miniature by H.O. Young. And the military side of the insults are pretty easy to show as the last crusade. As we pass out the tank, take a look at its trick, and you'll see that it's made of foam rubber and we have a metal. And same on the wear and tear of the actors like Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, who like to do their own stunts. And two mining cars are from Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. And speaking of Doom, we have Judge Doom's infamous Tipmobile from the award-winning Who Brave Roger Rabbit. The next four props are also from Who Brave Roger Rabbit. The Orange Pacific Electric Trolley Bar, well, it's not really a trolley bar. It's a modified city bus with fiberglass covering over the radio tire. And the three blue limits are three of seven. They represent different stages of destruction to any by its car. When Roger Rabbit drove it to town. The yellow helicopter is from the universe of energy over at Epcot. The blue cockpit is from Blue Thunder Star and Bright Shiner. The two planes are from the Rocketeer. And the long black speedboat is from Disney Presents the 100 lines of Black Jack Savage. That is a real speedboat that can reach speeds up to 70 miles per hour. The two space pods are from Starship Troopers. Down at the end, the large summer flight pod is mapped from Flight of the Navigator. Take a look across the canal and you'll get a backstage view of Residential Street. You might notice that the architectural details like the shingles and the siding. So I'm just out of the view of camera range. We only build for the camera needs to film. That's an old Wally which we like to call saving a whole lot of money. We're going to head on into the set for the first to work today. Looks like they're letting tour shuttles do so they probably are on their afternoon break. So hopefully Jen will be able to stop. We have to travel across the Bumpy Wood Bridge, so keep a real tight grip on your personal belongings. And your main seat will make us if you drop something in here. Oh, we might not be able to get it back.
here, I'll tell you where you are. Well, now you know why we call it the test. The DPA is going to take us around to the back side of the day and decide to say you can walk around the back. Okay, so you can walk steel frame covered in a wire mesh. The wire mesh is covered in colored concrete that's been hand carved to resemble the natural rock formations. The small yellow pipe scared the gas for the fires and explosions. The large green pipe scared the water for the flash flood. To create the flood, we released 70,000 gallons of water from three large holding tanks that are located at the top of the canyon. To add to the event, we lift some of the water out of their cannons. The, if we were to shoot one of the air cannons, uh, if we were to take one of the air cannons to New York City to shoot a basketball in it, we could shoot the basketball over the entire state building. The earthquake that you felt was created using large hydraulic shakers that was underneath the bridge. The dash of BK was created with the help of a Hollywood special effects crew. What seemed like an out-of-control disaster was actually a safe computerized sequence of events. And it all resets in about three and a half minutes. On our busiest days, that's in just enough time for the next shuttle full of visitors to head on in. Now from the canyons of Southern California to the streets of New York, sit back and relax as we did the New York Minute. It's over, sweetie. That was the only bad part. It's all over. It's all over. Coming up on your right hand side is a piece of Walt Disney World history. This is the Toon Grey Board Mickey Mouse, also known as the Mouse, and that was Walt Disney's personal play. He used that play to bring himself and his imagineers to Brook, Florida, looking for what he called the Florida Project. That's what we now call the Walt Disney World Resort right here in Orlando. He also used the play to go to the night to the Disney World Fair. At the World Fair, he premiered six attractions out of this small world, and here is the Road Forward at the Hall of President. As we turn this corner, if you take a look over to your right hand side, you get a backstage view of the back lot theater, currently home to the hunchback of Joe Girl, a live show based on our 34th animated feature. Now the last show is at 5.30 tonight. You want to get there about 30 minutes early because the show gets full really, really quick. Really, really quick. And it's a wonderful show. I highly recommend it. Coming up on your right hand side are New York Street Pets. And as we pass by Washington Square, take a look through the arch, you'll see that New York City skylight right here in Central Florida. What you're looking at is called a forced perspective. Those who just turn it on the class. Real Empire State really stands over 100 stories tall, and ours will average just a little over four. But this does bring us to the last stop on our tour, the American Television Showcase. Currently on display, we have the dress of the thrill, fashionable women's clothing. 